Hello crafty friends, welcome to this video in which I make this card for you using a bunch of stamps, a few dies and a couple of distress oxides as well as a few stencils. First things first, I created a stencil using an aperture die. I just cut it from smooth white cardstock and washi taped it into position over a piece of mixed media paper. And then I took Victorian Velvet Distress Oxide and blended it through my DIY stencil. There was a bit of, I think it was vintage photo, left on my brush. So there's a nice warm blend going on here between the vintage photo, the brown and the Victorian Velvet Pink. I only wanted a very light stenciling. This is going to be very much in the background. So once I'd finished, I removed my stencil and then spattered on some water to lift some of the color, to give it a bit of texture. I did dry that off camera with my hair dryer because I wanted to spatter on some more Victorian velvet and I wanted those spatters to be well defined, not dispersed and diffused. So I wanted my paper dry. I masked off the big white area so I didn't get any spatters over there and just spattered it on and I kept it all contained within that uh, bottom right corner. Next, I decided to do a bit of stamping and I chose this big rubber stamp. Because it's a rubber stamp, I used my Tim Holtz stamp positioner because you can do both clear stamping and rubber stamping really easily with this just by flipping the lid round to the appropriate side. So I positioned this big, it's a kind of vintage mixed media layered stamp. I positioned it over my stenciling inked it up with more Victorian velvet and then stamped it down. I had to press quite hard. I think my stamp platform is slightly warped, so it doesn't always give the best impression, but I got there in the end. Again, I gave my background a good blast with a hairdryer to dry the ink because I wanted to do some heat embossing and I didn't want any embossing powder sticking to my flower stamp. For the heat embossing though, I chose some scripty stamps from my stash. There's one that's got a postmark with it. There's one that says postcard and another one that is pretty much unreadable. I don't want them to be readable. I just want them to add texture in the background. So I stamped those in embossing ink, added embossing powder, and then heated it with my heat gun. And then once that was set and cooled, I spattered on a mixture of my high tack glue and water to create some sticky splatters. And then once again, I dipped that in my gold embossing powder and melted it with my heat tool. This is a great way to add spatters, gold spatters or any color spatters to your project. Just take a little bit of PVA glue, mix it with water, spatter it on with a paintbrush, dip it in embossing powder and Bob's your uncle, you've got some lovely spatters. You can splat just water, but I find when you heat it with a heat tool, the water evaporates too quickly and it doesn't always give a good finish. But if you mix it with a bit of PVA, it embosses really well. So that was my background finished. Next, I created layering pieces to go on top of the background. So I took a butterfly shape die and cut a butterfly from mixed media paper. I then pop this on a grip mat. I used my Alta New stamp wheel grip mat because I wanted to do some stamping as well as stenciling, which is what I'm showing you now. And this die and stencil and stamp set came as one from Amazon. I got it really cheaply and it's got loads of butterflies on it. So it's really useful. So the first thing I did was add Victorian velvet to the whole of the butterfly through the butterfly shape stencil, if you see what I mean. And then I added some vintage photo to the tips of the wings just to bring in a bit of variation. Next, I brought in the more detailed stencil and layered that over the top and added more ink through that to give some depth. 
And once that was done, I brought in the stamp, stuck it on my stamp wheel platform once I'd lined it up perfectly or as perfectly as I could get it. And then I inked that with Tuxedo Black Memento ink and stamped that on. I did um and ah about what colour ink to do the stamping in, but I felt that black would really pop. It would bring out all the details. So I went for black and I stamped that on the butterfly. There were a few areas that didn't stamp perfectly, but I could fix that really easily by just bringing in a black pen and colouring over those areas. And that's my butterfly done. I apologise if you can hear some random beeping in the background of this voiceover. My frogs, my pet frogs, are in the throes of mating season. So there is a lot of uh, vocalisation going on. For my sentiment, I chose a rather large Thinking of You stamp and stamped that in black so it matched the black of the butterfly and I popped that on a stitched banner die. Because the background is quite detailed, there's quite a lot going on with all the stamping and stenciling and heat embossing, I thought the sentiment needed to be fairly big so that it didn't get lost. I did want to add a bit of layering and a bit of foliage, some more kind of natural botanical images to my card. So I die cut a couple of leafy branches from white cardstock, added high tack glue to the back of them using a sponge dauber and then layered them over the background. I also coloured a stitched banner with the Victorian velvet and used this as a bit of a dropped shadow for my sentiment banner. So I glued the Victorian velvet banner directly onto my card and then to create a bit of dimension and depth I added foam tape to the back of the sentiment, the white sentiment banner and layered that on top so that a little bit of that Victorian velvet banner peeked out the bottom and the right hand side. And then I added my butterfly. I bent the wings up a little bit, added some glue to the body and then stuck it down. So the butterfly looks like it's sort of fluttering up the card. So far I've been working off of my card blank on a separate panel like I often do. And when I put that on my card blank, I thought it needed something around the edge. So instead of adding another piece of card to my card blank, I decided just to ink around the edge of the card blank with Victorian velvet to create a Victorian velvet border. To stop ink going inside my card, I put some scrap paper inside the card blank and to stop it accidentally going over onto the back of the card, I added a little bit of washi tape on the back so that it remained clean. Once that was dry, I used glue to adhere my card panel onto my card blank. I don't often use glue to do this because sometimes it can warp the paper a bit and when you open the card, the inside of the front of the card looks a bit kind of bobbly. But today I just used glue because it was to hand and I try to be judicious in my application so I didn't add too much glue so there wasn't much bubbling on the inside. As a finishing touch I brought in Morning Dew Nouveau Drops which dry completely clear so when they dry they look like little glass or water droplets. 
and I dotted these around and about the place to, as I say, just add a finishing touch, bringing a bit more energy and a bit more shine. And that is this card done. I do hope you like the card and that you've enjoyed the video and that it's given you some ideas of things to do with the bits and bobs that you've already got at home. If it has, please do leave a thumbs up. Let me know what you think in the comments and I will see you back here very soon. Thanks for watching. Bye for now.